Welcome back and thanks for following along. We're going to be checking the valve lash on the head today. And what that is, is the distance from the top of the shim here uh, to the cam lobe when the cam lobe is pointed up. So I'll bring you closer. We'll go in and check these, make sure they're within spec. So what we're looking at is an up close view of the shim under the cam lobe and this is the area that we're going to be testing for clearance when the cam lobes are pointed up. We'll be using a filler gauge such as this to test the distance in between these two. So people have different ways of doing it. The way I like to do it is I like to start with the largest acceptable tolerance and for this engine on the intake side that would be ten thousandths of an inch. Um, so what we'll want to do is basically find the feeler gauge that goes in with the least amount of resistance with no effort. So you don't want to be forcing anything in and you also don't want it to just easily slide in and flop around. So I'll start with the largest, ten thousandths of an inch, and this one does not go in. I'll go ahead and move down, go to nine thousandths of an inch, this one does not go in. Eight thousandths of an inch here. So this one does go in. However, it does require me to give it some force. So I'd say the clearance is still a little bit tighter than that. So we'll move down to seven thousandths of an inch. And that one slides in nicely. Minimal resistance with no effort on my part. Now, if I want to go ahead and drop it down once more to six thousandths of an inch, you'll see that this is probably a little too loose as it just slides right in, almost no resistance. So I know that this first lobe here, clearance, is going to be seven thousandths of an inch, and that is well within spec. Um, it's, it's on the tighter side uh, because the acceptable gap, I'll place it on the screen here, would be minimum six thousandths of an inch and maximum ten thousandths of an inch. However, this falls in the seven thousandths of an inch, so I am good to go. You want to go ahead and write these down, and I'll let you know why in just a little bit here. We'll move on to the next one. Again, ten thousandths of an inch. Nope. Drop it down to nine thousandths. Eight thousandths does go in, it does require me to give it some force. Seven thousandths here. That one goes in nicely. Minimal resistance with no effort on my end. We'll drop it down once more to six thousandths of an inch. And that one just slides right in, almost no resistance. So I know this second one is also seven thousandths of an inch, just like the first one. Again, within spec, so I am good to go. Go ahead and take our ratchet. We want to turn the cams. We'll go down to the next one. Up to you again. You can go ahead and start at the largest, again being ten thousandths of an inch. So the seven thousand is of an inch here does require me to give it a little bit more effort than the first one. So I'll drop it down to six thousandths of an inch here. And this one fits in nicely. Minimal resistance with no effort on my part. So I'll still say that this one with within spec being the lowest it possibly can be in six thousandths of an inch, but definitely within spec. Eight thousandths requires a little effort. Seven thousandths feels really good on this one here. Minimal resistance with no effort on my part. 
We'll drop it down again to 6 thousandths of an inch just to see what it feels like. And this slides in fairly easy, almost no resistance. So I know that this third one here will be 7 thousandths of an inch. So, so far, 7 thousandths, 7 thousandths, 6 thousandths, 7 thousandths. And again, you want to be writing all these down. Eight thousandths requires effort. Seven thousandths, minimal resistance with no effort on my part. Six thousandths, slides right in, almost no resistance. So again, this is gonna be seven thousandths. Now, if you wanna save yourself some time, it's really up to you how you like to work. You don't need to start at the largest one. Uh, you can start at seven thousandths if you'd like, and we will do that on this one here just to show you minimal resistance already with no effort so then i'll go right back up to eight thousandths does fit but as you saw it does require me to push it in so i know that it's already too large i'll drop it down to six thousandths of an inch very easy almost no effort so this one will be seven thousandths as well You'll want to go ahead and repeat the process for all of these, making sure to write down what you have. In my case, this is just an OEM build. I suspect the person I bought it from never opened it, so they didn't touch any of these. So, you know, uh, I did get lucky as far as with all of them being in spec as they do come from the factory as uh, within spec. Uh, but let's just say you had some that weren't in spec. Uh, let's say you measured these ones and these gaps were just way too big, you know, uh, and then you measure the back ones and they're way too small. So you maybe you needed smaller shims as in height in the front and larger, taller ones in the back. Now, if you were to write all these numbers down, you may be able to mix and match the shims. You could actually take these shims off the bucket. Let's say this one was too tall for the front, but you needed a taller one in the back you can essentially swap those two and retake your clearances and fall within spec. Uh, again, they do make different size shims that you can buy from Toyota. So again, you want to write all these down so then you have those numbers to play with. Uh, do keep in mind that the clearances will be different from intake to exhaust, but that does not mean you can't switch the actual shims uh, where you need them to go uh, to fit within clearances. I'm going to go ahead and finish all this up. I'm sure it's all going to be within spec for my case. I just kind of wanted to show you since I'm doing it anyways, how I do it when I build my engines. I will leave a link in the description to another great video that goes more into depth with how to actually measure the shims uh, for your buckets. So if you happen to need to buy some new shims, you can actually just uh, order the correct ones depending on size. So I'll go ahead and wrap this up. Thanks again for watching.